call vote, or excuse me, we're just going to do a roll call. Okay, and again, the hearing. Ray Dinsmore. Here. Philip Dillard. Here. Craig Drummond. Clevis Laney. Here. And Joe Pye. Here. With that being done, we will move forward into the requested zoning issue. Uh, from Angel Baptist Church, passed forward from the Planning and Zoning Board with a four to zero vote in favor with uh, provisions for the church. Uh, at this time, the Enon's the one that made a request for the zoning. I'm going to allow Enon to make their presentation first, if that's all in fairness with everyone. Is anyone from England prepared to give their... Yes, sir. <clears throat> State your name. All right, my name is Ken McWilliams, and I have um, been a minister at England Baptist Church since 1994. I currently serve as the Minister of Music and Administration. And uh, during the years of service, uh, I've watched our town grow as well as, uh, as our church. And with the success of our town and the ministries of our church, uh, it was only natural that we would need to uh, make plans for the future. And so in 1999, we purchased land to our north and west. And in 2007, we purchased land to our east. And these are the two uh, pieces of land that we're asking to be zoned institutional uh, consistent with the remainder of our church property. The piece of property to our north and west was purchased as an expansion of our available property for the purpose of parking. In the year 2000, we studied what this might look like, and we're now constructing a much-needed children's building. It's adjacent to our two church buildings, as is normal. The quality and features contained in this building are for the children of the Morris community, and they'll be as fine as any in this region for their spiritual and their social needs. Rather than leave the parking for this building to be in an uncontrolled manner, we're here to act responsibly and develop the next step of our parking plan for the members and guests in accordance with city ordinances. Uh, several questions arose while we presented this plan to the Morris Planning and Zoning Board. And we've addressed these, uh, each of these um, issues, beginning with uh, a water leak that was on our northernmost piece of property. And it was revealed that it was a broken water main that was subsequently repaired by the Birmingham Water Works Board. Uh, while trying to deal responsibly with water runoff, we originally thought a detention pond would be necessary on this same property. But through careful study, by our civil engineer, we discovered that the pond would not be needed and has been deleted from our plan. The other question that was uh, raised regarded lighting of our proposed parking lot. Uh, we have lowered the safety light poles to only 12 feet high with downward shining fixtures with an additional baffle on the rear of the unit to diminish the footprint of the light from the pole. We've carefully studied and found solutions to the questions that have been raised that are in keeping with the safety and security within the guidelines of local ordinances and federal regulations. We respectfully ask for your approval of our request for rezoning of these two parcels of land. Thank you very much. I want to ask our um, architect, too, if he will, uh, to show you the plans uh, so that we all kind of know what we're what we're talking about with respect to the problem. My name is Lawrence Corley. I'm the senior principal of CTSM Architects here in Birmingham. And we're basically specialists in church design. Um, this is a presentation that we presented to church about two years ago. And it shows you kind of the planning, the forethought of what was going on. And while it's not perfectly uh, construction documents, it does show you what the content and purpose of this building really is. Uh, the church property obviously is, is uh, 
in question here is this parcel here and these parcels to the east. Their existing sanctuary is here. Their former sanctuary uh, is here. The school building is across the street. And then their, the new building would be located here. Now, the, the changes that are occurring as a result of this project uh, include not only this building, it includes the playground that's between the two buildings. It includes small additions of parking in various places around the property on the available land so that we've saturated the property that we have. Uh, we're all aware there's a large retention pond here. We'll deal with that technically in just a few minutes. So let's look at the phase one building in this uh, plan. And I'll emphasize that this is actually a children's building for preschoolers and elementary children. But we're building the bottom floor because that's as much as the church can handle right now for both the children in preschool. And the top floor will be hauled in that is enclosed and ready for interior build out as soon as the church is able to as they grow. Now, that bottom floor would have an entrance on the west side uh, with a canopy. It includes the, uh, excuse me just a minute. It the canopy drop off here, main entrance here, is interconnected with the, the former sanctuary as well as the, the current sanctuary. It has an elevator and exit stairs, as you would imagine, for code. Then it has a welcome center here. That welcome center is, is often called a welcome center, but in reality, it's a security point. So that, you know, to be light about it, so you don't lose very many children. And so it's, it's a place to make sure that children pass by here, registered in, go to their classes, uh, are administered to and dealt with, and then when they come back, check out here so that the wrong person does not check out here. Now an example of what that looks like is a church that we did several years ago, and it's a quiet, somber kind of thing, but it's a security point that's uh, very bold. And here you see one in Wisconsin, a church where it was just seemingly full of young families bringing their children in. It's, it's filled with features like resource rooms. That is, these are not storage rooms. They're reservoirs from which to draw books to uh, guide the children carefully, finger paints, crayons, laminators, work tunnels, delivery carts, all kinds of things that basically make this a state-of-the-art kind of building. Uh, just to give you a glimpse at what we would do for a young person who's, say, nursery age, uh, you see a classroom here that we did at a church in Alabaster that would be similar to this, and you can see a place where you change diapers here, so the pastor can come change diapers right before he comes to preach. And, and then each of the diaper bags can be unloaded here so that it's all handy. And then, of course, obviously, there will be baby beds and places to walk and, and things like that. There's even a place for mothers to take care of their children while they're doing the church themselves. Uh, now, this would be a medium preschool room. That is, this is a room where there might be three or four years old places for activities and then a place for crafts and various things to teach the children carefully. And there's there's actually cabinet work in these rooms for three or four ministries of the church. That is not just Sunday, but also weekday activities, uh, mission kind of activities, and then then uh, what might be other things that go on, such as choirs for children. And they have connecting floors between two rooms so that you don't have to take the entire class down the hall to what I call the normal elementary school restroom. Uh, this probably would not be a normal building like you see that's off-white or, or a light green. It, it would be a place that kind of says children are welcome here. This is an exciting place and all you really do is change the colors to who they are. You don't really do any phenomenal things like that. Now here's a church that's uh, fairly close to here that that's an elementary room. You see how remarkably different that is than preschoolers. It's just a little bit, but those are normal price things arranged like a grade school child might want or need. Now, in, these, in this building, on the first floor and the second, there's an assembly room, and that assembly room 
what we call the children's theater. It's a place where you can assemble kids and you can have things like puppet shows, like they can pack out dramas here, of things that they're learning. There might be a DVD player play things that might be very, very appropriate. And then you can clear the room for games and activities, vacation Bible school, those kind of things. You see one here in Cullen, another in Trustful. These, these are kind of things that churches do to not only have a place to do those kind of things, but to stay the art and make sure that we're doing the very best for the children of Morris. Now, between the building itself that's being built now and the sanctuary would be a playground that is it's nested in the most secure place we could be. It's uh, perhaps blocking a bit of sunlight because of young skin that is very vulnerable. Here's a church we did in Georgia just to give you an idea. It's a simple playground that's bold and well formed. Uh, now, there will be an arrival place right beside there that is, you can get your wife to drop you off here with the children so that uh, she will she go park the car and you won't get your hair wet. All those things will work out so you don't have any problems in life. And you can see just our rendering to show what that might look like as you drop off right by the main entrance. Now, if you were driving down Morris Congestion Drive, uh, or you might drive past the sanctuary and see this building. You see, it, it um, probably is more than a simple church education building. It's meant to be uh, clear, bold, saying a statement of quality, and so that's what we'll be doing in that building. Uh, if you were to stand back in the property on the northwest corner and look at it, you can see the former sanctuary here and that education space beside it. This is the new building that's between there and the sanctuary. Um, this then is a rendering of the whole building, and uh, we hope that this is indeed a careful true life of what that would be. Uh, it's meant to be modern, contemporary, like a strong statement of quality to the community, the very body, as well as the community that I talked about a moment ago. Now, if the church is able to handle all this and get this done, they have other defined plans that perhaps are a bit of a stretch for them today. But you know the old school building across the road that bought several years ago. And so uh, we have a plan basically to take that and convert it to a youth facility that is not children or adults, but youth. You say, well, well what does that look like? Well, there's a theater for youth, and then there's classrooms or breakout rooms and various other things there. And uh, this is a picture of what we did at the church east of Atlanta. Uh, this kind of a sidewalk cafe and game area. Here's one in Trustful, just to give you a feeling of what's done these days for you. And that stained concrete little stage, you probably can't see it because of the bleach and light. But there's the person talking to the youth and giving them good moral values and so forth. There's the six colors of paint on the wall that are not juvenile colors. They're like the youth want. And there you see the conference fashion where they have both a bill and a seminar to help train children in the way that they might go. Uh, and here's another one in Starkville, Mississippi, in downtown, just to give you a feel for what happened when we had a corrugated metal building that would convert into a youth facility like you see there. And there's one where it's this kind of a sidewalk cafe for coming after school and hanging out. There's games, a place for pizza and coke. And this just painted sheetrock, but it's simple and bold for the youth. Now, the, the last movement, what I'm showing you is the upstairs of this building that's being built now is built to have classrooms for elementary children. But in addition to that, there's a very large children's theater on the top floor. And what I said a moment ago is we might occupy the bottom floor when we get this building built with both elementary and preschool children. And then as the church is able to financially and the church grows, then move all the elementary school to this floor using the elevator and the stairs and so forth. And then that would vacate rooms downstairs for the preschoolers to grow internally into other rooms with younger brothers and sisters. Uh, so it's set up for ADA kind of compliance, and which you know is a law, but not, not always followed. We're really intending to make this a very accessible building. And this is just an example of what two different churches did for a welcome center uh, for elementary kids, just to give you a feel. And so this is not casual or timid, it's meant to be bold and strong for the citizens and families of Morris. 
of that children's theater. Here's one actually on an unpopulated road at Shell Seal, 10 miles from Columbiana, 4 miles from West 280. They built this for their children as a place where they could have what they call children's church and children's activities. So you can imagine a Friday night moving for families on quilts, looking at a movie like that. You can imagine vacation Bible school for the entire community. You can imagine kids up there acting out dramas and learning things and, and really becoming players instead of they're just being talked to, talked down to, if you believe, or taught uh, to be a exciting kind of place. There's yet another new trust for this to be a field. So this are various <coughs> steps to make all of this come to pass in the buildings that came in past in the one new building. And the obvious thing about that is that, that this is going to occupy land that previously was a parking lot. Now, that parking lot was a central parking space as close to the sanctuary. But where we get is, is this, this is something that needs to be close to the sanctuary. Uh, that is, a young couple here with their first baby comes out six weeks later or whatever and gives their baby away to somebody. They just don't quite know how they feel about that. And so all this is meant to be adjacent and controlled. And so that's the kind of feeling that you have. So this is the first step in what really is a journey of things Eden Baptist Church wants to do here in Morris to give Eden uh, and all the people of the city of Morris state-of-the-art facilities for youth, for elementary kids, and especially for the babies. And let me show you one other thing. now to construction document stage and if you want to look at those carefully we can um, we came to listen to what was being said by all involved and we took those comments and basically took the the retention pond that we had uh, and made that a place that could be parking and we put the detention pond in another place where we had that the pond already uh, we put the lighting instead of on 20 or 30 foot poles, we put those on 12 foot poles. And furthermore, we put baffles on it, much like blinders are on the horse, uh, to control peripheral vision, and in turn, the light shines straight down, it has a baffle against it. And the average foot candle intensity is not so low as one foot candle. And at the property line, 15 feet away, engineers calculated that to be one quarter of one foot candle. So we're pretty serious about trying to control light. But if you think about it, every parking lot needs some light for safety. So we've emphasized safety, not to demise of anyone, but we try to do that actually in a way that's more far reaching than we've done on hundreds and hundreds of other buildings. Uh, by making these adjustments, we hope that we've been considerate and we've tried to work through getting the parking that we need. And that parking would have four priorities, not just for anybody who gets there early. It would be for the disabled, it would be for seniors, it would be for parents of very young children who need to be close to that entrance, and then it would also be there for visitors, just in case somebody's unfamiliar as they come to approach the church to ask the church to help them with their family needs. So uh, we're trying to get parking close enough to the building that all that would work beautifully. And we think it's less than appropriate to park across Morris Majestic. We think it's actually difficult to be across Camp Road because when you're carrying a little three-year-old, two-year-old, whatever by the hand, you can't always control what drivers are doing. And we want that parking to be handy to the church. And we do know that this is a forest. 
but we're trying to do this in a responsible way. Thank you very much. At this time, if they're willing to accept any questions, we'll allow them to have questions asked of them, but we're going to be very brief with the questions so we can get on to the uh, next item of hand, and that's with the opposition of this proposed parking lot and rezoning issue to have their opportunity to speak. So if anyone has any questions this time they want to ask an Amy, this is the time you can ask them. Yes, sir. Uh, your name, please. My name is Hayes Brown. My question is to Mr. Corley. Mr. Corley, how many parking spaces <coughs> were taken up by the uh, building? About 50. About 50 were taken up? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that no, it? Another question for Mr. Corley. Mr. Corley, I'm assuming that based on your statement about persons crossing Counts Road, that there would not be any buildings related to the church proposed for the, uh, the four acres? Well, quite frankly, we've not come that far. We're not ready to answer your question. It, it's a good, good question. We're just not prepared to answer your question. Um, we do plan for parking there, but, you know, we might have not the four classes of special needs people over there. So we are planning parking. We just haven't planned it all that way. And, and of course, that's not what we're planning to construct anytime soon. Either. One more question. Do you have any parking available uh, from your existing parking next to these buildings uh, that could be used by disabled people, seniors, parents of young children, or visitors? Uh, we do accept part of that's been taken up by the construction, and so we're actually re readdressing that. And the, the plan that we have basically shows where the disabled parking would be. And it is in, in excess of what's required by law. Your name, uh, my name is Charity Harris. Um, I would like to ask. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who could answer from Enon, but is there a current is there currently in place a training module for child care workers? I don't believe that question is relevant to the issue. Uh, for the for the development of the child care center. We're here on a rezoning issue, and that's not a relevant issue. Oh right, I'm sorry. I thought that's what he was saying. That's what the building's going to be for. Their okay. purpose for use of the building is their purpose and whether or not they're trained, that's going to be up to them in the state. We're here on the parking issue. Right. I, I thought it was all relevant to citizens. But that's they were just giving us a brief, least telling us what the building is going to be for. The rezoning issue is for the parking area, the property that is placed in. Now, I'm sorry I can't allow you to take time. That's fine. That's good. I hear you. All right. There's no more questions. Uh, they will be speaking for you. You want to speak? I'll, I'll speak to you. We start. Okay. Yeah, I'm David Schneider. I'm the uh, Senior Director for uh, Preservation Services for the Alabama Trust for Historic Preservation. Um, I, just, I think you all have gotten a copy of our letter we sent out some time ago. If you haven't, glad to get you another copy. But basically, uh, our concern was that you've got really two of the only real important historic homes in the, in the town of Morris are directly you know, on either side of what's proposed for the parking lot. Um, the one one property, the Snow uh, Snow Rogers House, has just been listed on the Alabama Register of Historic Places. I understand as of this week. It was just, just listed just, this week. I, I believe it was just listed. In Did it meet the following criteria that was what's required? That? Excuse me. Did it meet the required required criteria. Oh, one would hope so, or they wouldn't have listed. Well, did they send out someone to look at it? Yes, I assume so. I don't know. They they, I, they review applications, and I'm not part of their process. That's the Alabama Historical Commission. I don't have anything to do so with So this it. was just done when? I understand the letter is dated March 29th. I just heard about it myself. And actually, if you look back at my letter of January 9th, um, as a, somebody who deals with historic properties all the time, I made an assessment that time. I believe it was eligible for the National Register. And I, I'd stand Let me interrupt well. you for just one more. Uh, I want to ask one question of the chairman of the zoning board. Mr. Chairman, did y'all have a copy of this letter at the time, the zoning board? I would think not considering we just got it. Not for this. 
understand that. Did you have a copy of the letter from Mr. Smiley? Yes, we did. We had that, but not this is like the certificate of yeah. All that all that does, and then again, I, I didn't have any part of that. They, I was I was someone else had, had done that and, and gave it to me, and I was uh, uh, I just thought I'd let you know because again, what I said in my letter was that we thought it was eligible for the national register. I've been involved in historic preservation for 30 years, so I've got a little bit of training and done a lot of natural register work over the years, and that was my personal opinion as a consultant. But uh, uh, again, this is sort of gave you the corroboration of what we said. Okay. Uh, the big concern we have, obviously, is that the you know if you're you have two residential properties, um, if you have a right now they're separated by a, a nice tree line spot, when you put a parking lot in between it, it's going to change the character of the buildings considerably. It's going to make them less desirable, I think, as a, as a residential property. At least that would be my uh, my expectation of that having dealt with real estate for the years. So the concern that we have, obviously, is if this parking lot goes through, eventually those properties will be sold off, and in the future of those properties, obviously the church is expanding. Uh, one doesn't take rocket science to figure out what the future might hold for those buildings. So uh, obviously this is a it's going to affect the. Uh, Historic character of the properties and it's obviously going to affect property owners and potentially property values and, and our concerns for long term preservation. I understand that. Uh, I will ask one question. If a 60 foot paved road was put in front of that property, would it change the aspect? The city of Morris or the town of Morris owns a 60 foot road between the church and that house. Have you built a 60 foot road? We can't even give well, them time. Can, we can, I mean, lay, I we can lay more asphalt on a 60 foot wide stretch there than that church yeah. is going to put in that parking lot. That's fine. I mean, certainly the, the town's prerogative. I'm not sure right. why they would want to do that considering the well, I mean, impact of the Well, I mean, I just wondered, did y'all take that in consideration? I did, yeah. Okay. 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 I just want to ask that one question. Thank you. Appreciate that.